Hey everybody, it's Gauntletx, and welcome back to another Midweek Magic event. This week we'll be playing Omniscience Draft, where not only is the event free, but all of the spells that we're casting out of our decks are also going to be free. So if we draft a big 7 mana win condition, we can cast it for 0 mana. We just disregard the mana cost and take the strongest cards out of each pack, and it's going to lead to a lot of just turn 1 victories for whoever's on the play. It's going to be a super explosive, super random, super chaotic format, but it should be a pretty fun time for a nice little 3 win long free event like Midweek Magic. Like always, with free events like Midweek Magic, we will not be keeping any of the cards we draft, so we're going to be 100% focused on just taking the cards that are going to be the best in the event to get our three victory rewards. But with that all out of the way, let's just hop into the draft and see where the cards take us today. So starting off this draft, we want to take anything that can draw us cards over pretty much anything else. However, cards like Orzhov Locket we can't actually use. We get one mana of every color every turn, so white, blue, black, red, and green to activate abilities, but we can never hit double white, double black, or quadruple white, or any variation of the mana required to sacrifice the locket, so that's not actually a high pick here. Keldon Raider, though, actually is. We are going to be playing a 40-card deck with zero lands in it, so 40 out of the 45 cards that we draft end up in our deck, so there's going to be some amount of filler, so there should be plenty of stuff we can discard to draw another card and try to get to our more powerful plays and loop into some big stuff. Not only that, but it's actually one of the biggest creatures in this pack, too, which is kind of surprising. This is a little bit of a dud of a pack for Omniscience, but we're perfectly happy to take Keldon Raider. And once again, we want to take pretty much anything that can draw us cards, so we can try to just loop through our deck turn one and get a quick kill with some kind of haste win condition. So Depose is going to be the play here. Tap a creature, draw a card. You have to get a creature on the board, but it's pretty easy to do that when you have creatures like Keldon Raider that you can just play first and then Depose your own Keldon Raider to loop through your deck, draw some extra cards. Mind Rot is fine too if you somehow don't manage to win, Turn one when you're on the play, you can make sure your opponent is unlikely to be able to chain off if you have enough discard spells, but I'm just going to go for some cantrips, some card draw over literally anything, as that is always a solid plan in Omniscience. Continuing with the card draw, now we have a really nice one, Experimental Augury, which grabs the best card out of our top three and puts it into our hand, so it helps us find very specific cards instead of just uh, drawing the very top one. Now, Dark Bargain is an incredibly high pick. Look at the top three, put two of them into your hand and the others into your graveyard. Again, we're just trying to cast a large amount of draw spells turn one so we can draw most of our deck and spew it onto the board and get a quick kill. And here's our first pack that's almost a complete miss. I guess we have to just take a Sky Swimmer Koi because it can potentially draw us some extra cards if we play some artifacts onto the board alongside it. Um, then it can give us some card selection, again helping dig through some of the more filler that we ended up having to put in our deck. So we'll take the Koi. It's also the biggest creature in this pack, uh, because we don't get to have the mana to adapt the Skate Wing Spy. So this is just a 2-3, whereas this is a 3-3 Flyer. That's the biggest threat. Fairy Vandal, if the game somehow goes long, can be a bigger threat, but the game should not be going more than a couple turns the vast majority of the time, so rather just take the upfront uh, power and toughness of the Sky Swimmer Koi. Pick 6 gives us some interesting options. Imperial Oath doesn't draw cards, but it can set up our next draw. So if we cast this and then our draw 1, it helps dig for something a little stronger. So that could be really solid. also gives us a pretty big board state um, to do a bunch of damage in the future. There is Dranith Stinger, which is sort of like... Something that just immediately cycles away and draws another card, but it actually does cost us mana. So we have to use the alternate ability of getting the one mana of every color and spend one of that on the cycling. So it's not quite as good as a card that literally just says draw a card, but it's perfectly fine. And then Corpse Churn here is interesting too. We could miss on this. We could mill three and end up just dumping instants and sorceries in our grave, and then we're really sad. But if we hit a good creature, then this is sort of card draw as well. I think I'm going to go with the Imperial Oath here, actually. Although Take Flight is another option. It only draws us cards when we're attacking, so we really want a haste creature to go with it. But it's another way to try to do some things. I'm just going to grab Imperial Oath here. Pick 7 doesn't really have anything that'll draw cards for us. There's a Suffocating Fumes that we can cycle away. 
but the alternatives are just like a beefy creature like Meldweb Strider or Guardians of Koilos, and Guardians of Koilos is a beefy creature that can also potentially do some combo stuff, picking up another historic permanent. Back when they had the Omniscience drafts of just Dominaria packs, you could loop two of these together. I think since this is a Chaos draft and there's cards from like every set here, we're really unlikely to pick up two copies, but can be really fun. You cast one to pick up the other and then play the other to pick up the first one. So if you have anything triggering when like an artifact hits the board, like Sky Swimmer Koi, you could just draw your entire deck off of that combo, which was really, really fun. But I think it's pretty unlikely here to get two copies of the same card when there's so many different sets in the draft pod. So we'll just take the cycling card. Here we have just a straight up draw one with Code of Constraint, or a potential draw two with Experimental Synthesizer. We just have to cast whatever we exile immediately, so it's going to be bad if we try to run any counter spells in here, so we'll just probably not do that. Um, but then this turns into a draw two as long as we still have our emblem mana to use the ability. So we'll take the Synthesizer there. Now we're getting to a lot of the really small, not very impactful cards. I'll probably just take a Haste Creature like Swift Gear Drake here. Not massively pumped about it. Pick 10 is super bad for this format. We don't want a mana rock. We don't want to try to counter a one mana value spell. Trumpet Blast and Invoke the Divines are pretty narrow. I guess Fervent Strike maybe gives one of our big creatures haste and helps try to find lethal. Okay, this is a nice growth spiral. Obviously, we're not going to get any value from... Uh, dumping that land out, but this will draw us a card. Alternatively, the draw Skull Bomb can draw us a card and get a creature back from our grave, but the flaw with this is if we take too many cards, like Skull Bomb and Suffocating Fumes and Experimental Synthesizer, we will get choked on mana and not be able to use all these cards to actually draw, so I just want more uh, ways that don't require using the, the emblem to draw. So we'll take the Growth Spiral. Pick 12 here. All right, just take the biggest threat or the Pyroceratops because we could play this first and then cycle through all our instants and sorceries and make this absolutely massive. So that's a pretty fun one, but I think I like just the upfront value of the Cruel Grimnark. It's just already beef. Pick 13 is pretty bad. I'll just take a random creature. Pick 14, pretty bad. Oh, Psionic Snoop does draw a card, discard a card. I totally forgot about the Connive ability. That's actually a good one. Take that over the uh, the Graveyard Recursion thing. And for pack 2, pick 1, we have incredible card draw options. We've got Notion Rain to Surveil 2, then draw 2 to really set up those draws and make sure we're hitting some gas. Or there's Pirate's Prize to draw 2 and get a treasure. But the treasure is, again, only useful for abilities, because spells are always zero mana anyway. So I think Notion Rain is just better digging farther to what we need. And I'm incredibly happy to take another copy of Notion Rain here. Another Surveil 2 draw 2. Don't mind if I do. Pick 3 now. We Dragonauts is a fun one that can try to combo kill somebody. Watcher in the Mist is a good threat that's going to let us set up our draws. Or Brazen Buccaneers if we just want some more haste. This is always going to be a 3-3 haste because we're not going to be running any lands that it might draw into. I think I'm just going to take more haste here with the Buccaneers. Pick 4 looks pretty bad. There's some really average sized creatures like some 3-4s with the Whiptail or the Lavakin Brawler. Or there's some pretty mediocre removal like Heliod's Punishment. Um, and you generally don't love removal in the Omniscience format because your opponent's board is probably going to be so massive that one removal spell doesn't change much, but we don't really have other options out of this pack. I guess there's Cosmotronic Wave. If we do get into games where both of us get to just dump out all of our creatures on the board, this can help us still have a way to win the game by making it so our opponent just can't block any of our creatures in the first place. I think I'll actually take Cosmotronic Wave, kind of talk myself into that. Now we have a second Cosmotronic Wave, we've got a Pyre Hound, or we've got an Audacious Thief that's pretty hard to draw multiple cards off of because it probably dies the first time it attacks, but it's pretty great. Um, on that first attack, I think I'll take the Audacious Thief. Pick 6, we've got Mediocre Removal or Mediocre Creatures by Omniscient Standards. I think the best one would just be the Big Flyer. Let's take the Big Flyer here. Alright, here we go. This is another card that can really help us win on turn one. Maximize Velocity can give two of our creatures plus one plus one haste. Stack up a bunch of extra damage there. 
That seems premium to the point where I'll take it over Satessin training as just a draw one. I don't think I would take this over a draw two, but we will grab maximize velocity here. Pick eight. Uh, Devious cover-up is fine. It's really bad with our experimental synthesizer, but having a way to try to counter one of your opponent's biggest plays can be okay. I guess Elite Instructor, though, for another draw a card, discard a card is pretty huge. Pretty big deal. I think I'm still going to go with Instructor here, since we do have a synthesizer making the cover-up worse. And everyone's casting so many spells each turn that countering one usually doesn't completely... Uh, change the course of the game. It's just solid. Pick nine. Looks like we're just taking the beef. Grab a big four five body. Pick ten. The best creature here is just the moderately sized flyer. Pick eleven. Here's a discard a card, draw a card off of a neonate. Pick 12, I guess we could fog. There's two different fogs here. It's kind of like Arena's telling us something. Yeah, I guess that buys us an extra turn. It's cute. Pause for reflection looks cooler, so I'll take that one. Well, now we get a Pyrehound for one more random large threat. Moonlight Hunt does absolutely nothing without wolves or werewolves on the board. I don't think we have any right now. Yeah, and we're not super likely to get more, so... Let's take the heirloom, which does very little as well. Oh, and then there's the wolf. The big 4-5 wolf right after. Well, that's all right. We probably weren't going to get a high number of those anyway. So for our final pack, for pack 3 pick 1, we have not opened up any significant card draw. We have Academy Wall that draws a card, discards a card once per turn. We have Cyclers... And we have Semester's End, which if we have enough creatures with good Enter the Battlefield effects on board, like Elite Instructor, Psionic Snoop, um, what else? Kelden Raider and stuff. If we have enough of those on the board, then this will draw us a few cards during our end step when they come back to the board. I guess it's the coolest, cutest card we can take, so I'll go with the Semester's End. Pack 3, pick 2. Definitely would not recommend the Leyline Invocation for the 0-0. Zero, zero. Secrets of the Key looks fine, though. Get 3 clue tokens. We are going to have to actually use the emblem to draw the cards off the clues, but that's still a draw 3, which is a pretty big deal. Pick 3. Pirate's Pillage looks pretty perfect. Discard a card, draw 2. Get some treasure tokens for our abilities, which we actually have a lot of in this deck. Take that Pillage. Now a Tome Raider is a tiny little threat we get to put on the board while drawing an extra card. It works great with our Semester's End to draw us an additional card. And looks like here for pick 5 we're probably just taking the biggest threat again. Which I guess is a 4-3. I guess the Vanguard we can activate uh, if we're not using any other abilities for the turn. So it's kind of like a 4-3 but bigger because it's also buffing the rest of our board. I guess if we play enough mediocre random creatures, like the 1-1 one, one flyer that draws this card and stuff, we can draw a lot of cards off the Rager. That might be the pick, actually. Yeah, we'll go for the Rager here. And it's only like a little bit smaller than the other two threats, since it does get bigger as we're sacrificing cards to it. Ooh, draw four? That's insane. Yep, that's unbeatable take that into the story there for sure oh i really like uh, bone pit brute in this format it's just huge four or five menace and you get that extra damage when it hits the board there's no card draw in the pack to take over it so we grab the gigantic threat now we're just picking up a threat or a removal spell so turn to slag or silver quill apprentice i'll go for the silver quill apprentice it can help lead to turn one victories if we get our little haste trick as we will be casting a lot of spells, getting a bunch of extra damage. Pick 9, Academy Wall does a lot of digging, or we can just take Colossal Dreadmaw. I do think I want to get a few more actual just big creature threats at this point. I think we're doing pretty great on card draw to loop through basically the whole deck. We just need big creatures to get that haste kill in the end, so I'm going to grab the big creatures now and take Colossal Dreadmaw. Take another Colossal Dreadmaw. 
take a uh, mob. Haji mob. Yeah, or removal. I don't think I'm taking removal. I think we're just trying to be on the play, really. <laughs> and then... I guess a 3-3. Not a super exciting pack there. Not a super exciting pack here. What is the flip side of this? A 3-2 that makes our opponent sack a card. Okay, so neither of these are good. All right, we definitely can't main deck just destroy a vampire or enchantment. So it's going to be some quick, simple deck building for the Omniscience event. You just look through your deck and really just look at the low mana value cards and cut four of them, like Neglected Heirloom for the equipment. Like, yeah, that's not going to do much. I'm going to keep the Fervent Strike for another way to get haste, I think. Um, Prankster's not doing a lot. Feeling a Dread is not doing a lot. Tenth District Veteran's not doing much. Most of our other three mana creatures are drawing a card some way, somehow, though. I think those are all better. Public Enemy. Yeah, that just seems really hard to get the card out of that. I'll keep the Fog, because it's funny. And we have to have some amount of filler anyway. And then we're cool with all these big flying and ground troop kind of creatures here. Yeah, we'll just cut four of these. Public enemy looks really bad. Heirloom looks really bad. At least the creatures, like even if they're small, you stack up enough of them and you're going to be finding lethal eventually, so. I mean, I kind of like being able to tap four of our opponent's creatures in one turn. That's pretty big. I think I like that a little better than just another random Durly creature. So we'll just keep like the 3-3 three, three and call it a deck there. Let's see what kind of chaos ensues when everybody's going to be casting everything for free as we head into the gameplay. All right, here we are on the play for game one, which means our opponent gets to watch us play Solitaire. Let's get this going. So, let's Notion Rain first, Surveil 2, Draw 2. Oh, I actually should have Silver Quill Apprenticed first. Oh my god, yeah, we're just gonna win. Turn 1. We just need to hit our haste thing. So play the Silver Quill Apprentice. They don't have any instants, any counter spells, so... Now we um, go ahead and Surveil. There's a draw, there's a draw, keep those. And there's a concession, I mean, yeah. They... <laughs> Gave us seven card hands this time for the Omniscience format, so there's really just no hope on the draw without like a counterspell in hand. So basically what was going to happen there is our opponent gets to watch us play Solitaire for like five minutes until we draw into our cards that give haste. Because we're going to resolve that, that's a super wide board already, although we just need to make our board tall because we don't have anything that gives the whole board haste in this deck. So the plan is to like then play the Bone Pit Brute, make the Apprentice even bigger. When we play the Dark Bargain to dig, we get another draw spell. We just get to draw every draw spell in our deck to draw everything in the deck, make the Apprentice a 20 power, hasting, lethal threat. So that's the game plan there. Even if it didn't fully pan out, since our opponent didn't have instance in hand, the game was functionally over, and they knew that, so they didn't want to watch us play Solitaire. So that's how Omniscience Draft works, especially when they give us seven card hands. I don't know why we have seven card hands this time around. Last time they did this format, you start with three card hands, so it was a little more likely that games didn't always end on turn one, because it's possible you just drew all of your filler in your opening hand, and even sometimes you'd mulligan down to two, just because you would have like three three mana creatures and you're like this is just not enough for this format we got a mulligan into card draw or something so it was a little more interesting today's event though i feel like it's going to be a lot of that it's going to be opponents conceding to us when we're on the play and us having to concede to opponents when they're on the play but hey we get our first random rare reward see if we get some gems and we do gems from wilds of eldraine since i had all of whatever rare we were going to get there so nice stuff that gives us enough gems to start working towards another draft. All right, here we are for game two on the play. Huge card draw on the opener, so snap keep. And we loop through the deck and then fervent strike somebody to death. That is the plan. Let's go for the biggest card draw first, probably. Notion Rain, Surveil 2, draw 2. 
I guess Dark Bargain digs just as far. No, it digs three cards deep, not four cards deep. All right, well, opponent does not like being on the draw, which is fair enough. Again, if the gameplay did happen, I'm sure it would have been about the same. If they didn't have a ton of counterspells, because of the card selection we have here, we can pretty much guarantee that we're drawing into more ways to draw, like, uh, two cards off of each of those spells to just keep looping through, get through the deck till we hit some big enough threats to Fervent Strike and double haste with our other card, our Maximize Velocity. So it's going to be looping through our deck on the play again. That is going to be our second victory for our second random rare reward. And it shall be more gems from the Brothers War. So my apologies, the gameplay is not going to be the most interesting today, but I still wanted to get this video out to you all. So if you have not drafted in this midweek magic event yet, uh, I get to show you all the strategy that you should be trying to employ of drawing through your deck, because I've seen a lot of posts on the Magic Arena Reddit of people who just went into the midweek magic event and didn't read and uh, didn't know that it was an omniscience draft this time around and just drafted a normal deck and now they're getting hosed. So hopefully you've all seen this video before you draft your own deck or you saw that it was omniscience draft and, and knew to draft the big high mana value spells. So this game we get to be on the draw. So we get to see our opponent play solitaire and combo off here and see if we die. So far, so good. They're starting just by playing a bunch of creatures. It's the card draw that's the scary stuff. Manifold key that can give unblockability to a lot of damage if the game goes long. All right. Well, they're going to give us a turn, which means we're going to try to combo off on that turn. So let's get all this out of the way. Make sure they have no blockers up. For when we hopefully pop off and let's see. All right, so let's uh, Notion Rain first, Surveil 2, Draw 2. Find Growth Spiral and something else, sure. Find Elite Instructor. Okay, let's Pirate's Pillage the 3-3 three, three away as our weakest card. To Draw 2. Find Pyre Hound. Perfect. Play that before anything else at this point. Just draw off the Growth Spiral. The Spoil to the Hunt. Kill this in response. This prevents combat damage only, so I can't save the Pyre Hound. All right. Well, that's a bummer. Brazen Buccaneers, that's a hasting threat, that's fine. It's elite Instructor, draw a discard. Find Insolent Neonate, that's another discard and draw. Let's get rid of the fog. Let's go all in here. And uh, imagine that we can kill them. I think I'm actually sacking the Neonate to the Rager here. I could sack the treasures to it as well. Actually, that's that's pretty wild, yeah. Let's start sacking treasures. Suffocating fumes is going to require two mana to draw, so I think I'd rather just keep sacrificing things, ideally. Pyroloth? Okay, that's huge. Get the scry. And three more things to sacrifice if we need to. They got the counterspell on this one. Destroy evil, the Stormclaw Rager. And that is... Sorcery speed ability, so I can't draw any more cards in response. All right. Opponents on the, the all big creatures and removal game plan. Oh, there's the into the story and the notion rain. All right, game's over. Yeah, there's there's the concession from our opponent. They have accepted defeat at this point because uh, then we do still have the one extra piece of card draw we needed from Keldon Raider or Insolent Neonate to then draw into the notion rain, the into the story. Dig, let's see, four cards deeper with Into the Story, four more with Notion Rain. If we hit any filler stuff, we throw it in the grave. So yeah, get to draw through the whole deck. And just haste like three Dreadmaw-sized creatures for 21 damage. All right, well, 
that'll do it for the event. That's going to be three for three. At least the third game we got to play a little bit more and kind of show off what happens when you do get to fully go through your turn. But uh, yeah, being on the play twice in a row was really helpful. And then our opponent on the play just didn't have enough card draw to really combo us out turn one. So we get the nice little 3-0 run. And our final mystery cosmetic reward is a Parallax card style for Niv-Mizzet Guild Pact, which is pretty fitting because that'd be a fun card for this format because you just get to play your 6-6 Flying Hexproof for Multicolored for free. Well, that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video and you're interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more on your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.